Hello and welcome back to this mini series for how to create your online course. We're going through the major stages of creating your online course, taking it out your head and getting it out to the world. Now, if you watched yesterday's video, which was all about your course creation motivation, there were six tips in there to help you get motivated for creating your online course, boost, boost, <laughs> bust that procrastination. And I also addressed the three key major fears that people normally face when it comes to thinking about creating an online course. My name is Sarah Cordiner and I am a qualified postgraduate education professional. I've been in the education space for well over 14 years now and I have been helping people create their own online courses from individuals through to small businesses right up to federal government and universities. I recently spent the last couple of years as the youngest university director in Australia's history directing a university here in Australia and have also been the CEO of an international education company for over a decade internationally. So I know what I'm doing. I have well over 20,000 students who have been through my course creation, education, train the trainer training programs. And I have students from all over the world currently studying in my online school from over 146 countries. So what I want to do is show you that you can do this too and how you can replicate the same success that I have had. Because it wasn't very long ago when I was doing business the traditional way. My education company was delivering face-to-face -face training, corporate training services, professional personal development, training in communities, training to the public and entrepreneurs and businesses. And I was exchanging my time for money a lot. I was also doing a lot of consulting work, a lot of coaching and mentoring type work. And I was really in a space where I was working working harder in order to earn more. What I did is I turned my knowledge, my consulting expertise and knowledge, the tips and the information I, I tended to provide constantly, time and time again, the most commonly repeated content. And I turned all of that into online courses. And the second I did that, I went from having a locally dependent business to having one that had a global market instantaneously. I was able to reduce my overheads by almost 90% whilst increasing my profit margin margins by 60% in just 12 months of taking it from here and putting it into an online platform. So the reason I'm doing this mini course is because I want to show the world that you can do it too. The more knowledge we're sharing with the world, the better place the world becomes. But also because I sent out a survey to my audience last week asking what are the biggest questions you have about online course creation right now? And I got this massive sheet of questions back. It's got absolutely tons and tons of questions in there. And I've broken them down into the four major phases of creating an online course. So the first one that I addressed in my video yesterday was all about first of all having the motivation to create a course in the first place. But the four major phases after that are number one, planning your course and planning for profit. And that is what I'm going to be teaching you today. Now, just so you know, the other three phases, the second stage, which is a video I'll cover tomorrow, which is all about how to get your knowledge out of your head. It's all about your content and your delivery. How do you structure it? What content do you include in your course? How do you deliver it so that it's engaging? The third stage, which is also another video I'll be covering this week is all about your course technology. So what tech do you need? What equipment do you need? How do you get it? How do you use it? How do you set it all up? I will be touching and answering some of those questions that have come through in that particular video. And the fourth stage is all about launch and marketing. How do you actually get your course out to the world and getting students enrolling in it all of the time? So those are the four major phases. And today we're going to be talking all about planning and profiting from your online course. Now, in the questions that I had come back from the survey, I had loads that came back that kind of fit into this category. They include things, you know, how do I get started? How do I pick a topic? Um, how do I make sure that it's profitable? How do I price my online course? Um, how do I fit it all in with the rest of my business? How do I incentivize people to uh, have uh, buy into a subscription-based model? How do I, again, how do I pick the topic? Um, loads and loads of questions. So that's exactly what we're gonna answer today. 
Now, step number one for creating an online course, and I've talked about those four major phases. Within those major phases, there are 10 key steps that you would go through. And in today's uh, mini tutorial, I'm gonna take you through those first three steps. So the first one is to first of all, pick a topic. What is it that you are actually going to teach about? Now, I have a lot of people who come to me who know they want to share something with the world, but have no idea what course to create, what even what topic they're going to work with. Some people have an absolutely clearly explicit idea because it's based on their business expertise or something they're super passionate about. Some people come to me with an idea that they think they're going to create their course with. They go through this next exercise and they completely change their mind because it's important that you pick something, first of all, that you absolutely love, that you are completely passionate about. And one of the main reasons for that is because an online course is something that you are going to give birth to. It is going to feel like a child for a while because you're going to have to do a lot of work to make it wonderful, to make it you, to take it out to the world. And you're going to have to keep marketing this for a long time. And that is going to be very painful <laughs> if it's not something you really, really adore. Not to mention the fact that when you're doing videos like this, when you're out there sharing your content with the world, it's going to be pretty obvious if there's not a spark of passion there. So the first thing I always get people to do is to write down 50 things that you absolutely love. So get yourself a piece of paper right now and draw three columns in it and in column number one right at the top love and 50 things that you absolutely love so if you can't get your brain moving just start with you know people that you love food that you love just to get this brain creativity flowing and working from there I want you to think about topics that you love look at the books on your shelves which books do you love what films and movies do you love what do you love helping people with what do you love talking to people about what do you love sharing advice about and just let it flow don't think too much about it just put down everything that comes into your head do not over analyze lies. Now, the second thing that is important for you to consider when it comes to picking your online course topic is, is it something that you're good at? Now, you're not gonna be able to teach people very well. It's gonna be a struggle for you. It will come across in your teaching and in the questions that your student asks if it's not something that you can do. Now, this might seem obvious, but in this space, I have actually seen a lot of people who choose to teach a topic purely because it's trending and they wanna jump on a profitable bandwagon. And so they go to sort of some of the online course marketplaces, look at some of the most um, highly selling course categories, and they go and create a course in that particular particular area so that they can try and profit from it. Now, some people manage to do it, <laughs> uh, but I would highly advise against that because it, you're, it, you're gonna really, really struggle to create that content if it's not something that you're naturally really, really good at. If people ask questions and you have to go away and research and find the answer, I'd question whether or not you're going to be providing a fantastic service to your students, being able to provide them with a full source of information and, and history and experience that you can draw upon to really contribute to the unique situations of each of your students. So the next column is good at, write down 50 things that you are good at. And again, if you need to just get the creative juices flow flowing, think of things that you can just do easily, whether it's making a cup of tea or a certain dish, and then start to fill out things that you're good at in your job, things that you're good at in your business, things that you're good at in terms of your hobbies and things that you do in your spare time, stuff you do around the house, things that you're good at when it comes to your job if you're employed, whatever it might be, write all of those things down. It can be um, not necessarily skill-based. You know, this can be um, personality and characteristics of yours, such as you are good under pressure, you're good in a crisis, you're good at working with people who are distressed, whatever it might be. So just brain dump as fast as you can everything that you're good at in the second column. Then in the third column, simply write down everything that you have experience in. Now this is important because your credibility significantly increases when you can say to people, I have been doing this thing for X number of years. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be formal experience or formal training. It can be life experiences that you've been through. So perhaps you have worked in a particular industry your whole life. Perhaps you uh, have had a certain negative experience in your life. You've overcome a trauma. You've got through a hard or tough event. Perhaps you have had 
had a successful or a positive experience or event in your life and you want to share with people how you achieved that particular successful result. This can also be formal and informal training that you've done, qualifications that you have, jobs that you've done, work experience that you've been in. It doesn't have to have been a hundred years worth of. It's anything that you can say, look, I've done this or I've experienced this myself for real so I understand how you feel and therefore I'd like to share with you what I did to get this, get through that, get beyond that, get to this, whatever it might be that you are teaching people to get to. So they're the three things um, in your list, your third column, list down 50 things that you have experience in. And you should have now three columns with 50 things in each. Now you'll probably start to see some patterns emerging that there are things that commonly cross against all of those commons columns. Now, the next thing I ask people to do is go through those and start scoring them out of 10. Um, where one is, don't love it very much, not very good at it, don't have much experience, and 10 is, I love this absolutely passionately, I'm really, really good at this, and I have loads of experience in it. And what you're gonna start doing now is look at everything that you kind of have sevens, eights, nines, tens in, and uh, if you find things that cross, it's a common theme that crosses, love, good at, have experience in, and they all have 10 out of 10, those are the topics that you will use to start exploring further because those are the absolute core ingredients that you need to have a topic that is going to work for you, that is going to be something that fits within your zone of genius, that naturally is part of who you are and what you love and what you are going to shine the most in when it comes to putting the rest of this course together. So step number two out of the 10 major steps of creating an online course, and this fits into this planning and profit stage two, is then going, okay, so I found a topic area that is going to work for me. Now you need to work out whether or not that topic is going to have market demand because it might work for you, but if there's not a market of people out there that are interested in it, that want it, that need it, that are searching for it, that have the problems that that course is going to solve, you're going to be wasting your time and money. And hands up, who wants to do that? I didn't think so. <laughs> nobody wants to waste their time and their money creating something commercially that nobody's going to buy or sign up for if it's a lead magnet course. You want it to be highly attractive to your target audience. So a couple of things that you can do here. Now, um, there is a, a huge set of steps that I take my, my course creation students through when it comes to doing your market testing, checking for market demand. Um, and in this short video, I'm certainly not gonna go through all of those steps. If you do want to learn exactly how to do in-depth market testing um, make sure you stick around at the end of this video and I'll tell you how you can do that but for now I'm going to give you just a couple of tips to get started because I want to give you something that you can go away and do today now what you want to be making sure when it comes to market demand is that people are talking about your topic so you've picked your topic now are people talking about it are they asking questions about it is it trending these are the three things that you need to check next because if people are talking about it, if they are asking questions about it and it is trending out in the industry at the moment, then you have got yourself a topic that is showing signs of having high market demand. So how do you know if it's trending, if people are talking about it and if people are asking questions about it? Grab yourself a pen and paper because I'm gonna give you a couple of very easy basic starting points to check. Now, talking about it, of course, it's important that you find the place that your audience are having conversations. Now, for most of us, we can probably do some very basic searching here on Facebook. And this is a place I love to go to find out what people are saying in my industry at the moment. So go onto Facebook and at the top of Facebook, you will see a search bar. Go in there and type in the keywords for your audience. So let's say you've target entrepreneurs. 
Um, so that's your target market. That is who you're looking for, by the way. You are looking for your target market. So find your entrepreneurs if you target entrepreneurs. If you target mothers, type in mothers. If you uh, or mums, um, you know, if you target coaches, type in coaches. This is about finding the people who are having the conversations and asking the questions that your course is going to look to solve. Go in and find groups that people in your avatar are hanging out in. Join those groups and when you're inside those Facebook groups, there is a second search bar inside the groups. Go into that secondary group search bar and type in your topic for your course. So for instance, I teach people how to create online courses. So I might go into a group of say entrepreneurs and go into that group and search for online course. Now, what that will do is bring up every single post inside that group that includes that keyword. And normally within that search result, you'll find heaps and heaps of questions that people have been going into that group to ask. So this is a fantastic way to not only see if people are asking questions about it at all. If you're getting no search results, the chances are people are not asking questions about it, which means there isn't a demand for your topic, or at least there isn't a demand for your topic in the way that you are currently wording it and are going to need to do some market research steps to find out how your audience are wording it, which is something I go into in my course. So that's one place to check whether people are talking about it or not, is joining those Facebook groups. Go and do that now. Um, This will work really, really well for you for future work, for future market research, and see what comes up. It will also be really interesting for you to see what kinds of questions they're asking. And I'd highly recommend you open an Excel sheet or a Google sheet or something and start recording some of these questions because those questions they're asking is going to help you in a next stage of course creation, which is all about how do you know what content to create? Well, obviously, it's going to be the content that provides the answers to the questions that your audience are currently asking. So it's going to really help you out, get a good idea of what kind of of course you're going to create a bit later on. Now, um, another place you can check for the types of questions that people are asking and are they asking questions about it is a fantastic public website I love, and it's called answerthepublic.com. Now, in this website, Answer the Public, it basically um, collab- pulls together all of the questions that people are typing into Google. It's amazing. It changes and updates very, very frequently. So do go in there regularly and have a look. So if, for instance, you're teaching a course on feng shui, you go into answerthepublic.com and there's a big search bar in there. Type in feng shui and it will bring up every single question from how, who, when, where, what, why, and list the questions that people are literally typing in. Now, if you get heaps and heaps of questions coming up in that answer the public search result, you know that people are asking questions about it, which means it is going to have high market demand. Thumbs up goodness. It also obviously shows you what questions. So again, this is gonna help give you a really good idea as to uh, what type of course you might be creating. Now, uh, that's how to find whether people are asking questions about it and talking about it. Uh, Another thing to do is check whether or not your topic is trending. So there's a free tool on Google called Google Trends. So simply go to Google Trends, Google it, it will come up and type in your topic in the search bar at the top. Now, when you press search, what this will do is bring up a graph and that graph will basically have a line on it. Make sure you change the setting to all of time not just the last week, for instance. Um, And what it will do is it will show you whether your topic is trending upwards, i.e. search results in that topic or search terms in that topic are increasing, which means excellent, your topic is trending upwards. Yes, good sign for you that you're going to have a course that has market demand. Now, if the trend line is going down, that is a bad sign and I would recommend that you go back to your course topic idea and potentially look at doing something else because if it's trending down, if people are searching less for that topic online, it might mean that it's not 
going to be of a high interest to your particular market. Um, now, if you get search results that are pretty flat and consistent over time, that is also a good sign, provided that there are lots of search results. So this is something that is more of an evergreen kind of topic. An example of this can be, for instance, leadership, uh, love, money, wealth, you know, all of those kinds of things are topics that just very rarely change with time. They are always popular, they are always trending, they're evergreen. So again, if you come up with either trending upwards or consistently staying around the same kind of flat level, those are signs that you do have an online course with high market demand. Now, within that market research section, there are lots of other things you would then go on and do next. If you basically hit a tick and hit a thumbs up in all of those tests, and there are more of them that I go into with my clients, um, then you would go into some market research stages. There is some survey work that you will do. There'll be some asking the audience questions that you will do to really narrow down the specifics of exactly what your course needs to teach, how you're going to teach it, what they want, how they want it. And I do provide the exact swipe copy and survey templates for you to use to go away and do that. Now, the third stage, and this is the last tip of this video today, is all about how you price your course. Now, how you price your course, unfortunately, there is not a dead set formula to this because of the fact that every single industry is different. Now, when I talk to clients one-on-one, -on -one, it's easier for me to give price ranges because each uh, I can get to know your business, I can get to know your particular course, where you're going with it, and we can work together to work out what works for you. But I want to give some general advice for everyone here to get you to start thinking about this. So here's um, a, a way that I describe how you can start pricing your course based on the type of course that you're going to create. Now, those of you who are creating an online course to be more of, oh, oh, sorry, I keep itching my eye, I've got hair hanging on my face who want to create an online course for a lead magnet purpose. So those who are creating an online course, it's going to be either free or cheap for the purposes of building an email list, lead generation. This is gonna be pretty easy for you. Ideally, you want that mini course to be free so that people are going to join your email list in exchange for it. So information is what is going to be in a mini course like that information is easy to come by it's stuff that can be googled it's stuff that can be youtubed think of a book you know books are basically information books generally speaking are less than 30 dollars it's rare to find books other than big big texts that you get um, that are sort of exceeding that 30 dollar kind of mark so information is purely information. It's stuff that you have uh, curated, you've put together to give people an idea of basically how to do something, how to start something. So those kinds of courses are going to be very cheap. They're going to be free up to perhaps no more than about $50 for really good information. Maybe you can stretch up to about 97, but generally speaking, you're looking at less than the $50 mark. Now, the next stage is what I call implementation. This is when you move from just giving people information and start giving them how-to steps. You start giving them the recipe that they need to follow, a guideline, a process, a procedure. It gives them a way to actually put into practice or implement whatever it is that you've been teaching in just the information stage. So this here is when your course can start to be priced a little bit higher. People in this space, generally speaking, will price an implementation based course anywhere from ten dollars up to maybe two or three hundred dollars they can even range up to about the five hundred dollar mark so that gives you a rough idea and i know it's very very vague but um i i really want you to just start thinking of roughly where you're going to fit because next stage will be to kind of narrow that down a little bit more after implementation, you then have what I call the transformation stage. This is when you make somebody's life or business or situation fundamentally different at the end of your course 
than you had they had it at the beginning of your course. So for instance, you um, they make more money, they are happier, they um, have overcome a problem, they have, um, I don't know, they've, they're physically different, they've lost weight, whatever it might be that your topic is. They are in some measurably um, evident manner different and transformed in some capacity. So this is now where you start to move into the higher pricing range. These types of courses can go up over the four figure marks because people are buying the change in their life. They're not buying just the information. They're buying how their life will be different as a result of getting and doing with that information and with those strategies. It's the outcome and the transformation they're paying for. And that usually will require a bit more effort in terms of what you're putting into your online course. They're going to expect some personal attention. They are going to expect templates and checklists and process guides and demonstration videos. So there's going to be a bit more content and delivery and effort involved from your part as the online course creator and trainer in a transformational level program, which of course is rewarded back with higher income. Then the next two stages we have are done for you and done with you. Now done for you is quite literally when you provide a service. So as an example, I teach people how to create their own online courses. I have free stuff, I have cheap stuff, I have middle range stuff in terms of learning and DIY and go and do these courses. But then I also have a, do you know what? There's a group of people out there that just want me to do it for them. They just wanna give me all of their stuff, their training materials and their content and they say, Sarah, just create my course for me. Please build my online school. Please create my PowerPoint slides for me. Please turn this into learning content. And so I have a service that quite literally does that. Now, because this is a service, this is where your prices are naturally going to be higher. You're going to be using up your time or you might have staff that work on your team to do and provide these services. And so you're going to have to cost accordingly so that you're not making a loss. So these done for you services now start to move up into your higher price brackets obviously depending on the service you're providing and how much of your time and expertise is going into this will depend on the pricing that you use. But generally speaking, this is the higher price range. And then finally, at the top of the price tier range, I have what I call the done with you experience. So my example for this is my group coaching programs or my course creation boot camps where people come and literally spend a week living with me uh, to create their online courses and set up their whole education based business and walk away with everything completely finished and live and their course is making money before they leave. So what would be your equivalent of a done with you where they literally get a unique VIP experience and have their whole life and business transformed or whatever it is that you do and they walk away with with the results already achieved at the end. And you were there holding their hand throughout their entire process. That is what would be the done with you stage. Now, also when it comes to pricing, the next thing you're gonna be thinking about is maybe not just necessarily the individual sale price per course that you, you're creating, but also if you were going to be creating multiple courses later on. Are you going to consider having a subscription model or a membership type model? Uh, once you have more than one course, you can move into a stage where you charge people a monthly fee. Now, even, you don't have to have more than one course to do that. You could even just charge a monthly fee for access to one single course that perhaps you provide, I don't know, maybe monthly coaching as part of, a live group Q&A call. Maybe you um, provide a new tip each week as part of that course. So that there's something that's coming in each month that justifies you charging a monthly fee for that particular online course. Now, if you're gonna be going for a subscription model, you're going to want to price lower because obviously people aren't gonna pay really, really, really high prices per month for something that doesn't change significantly each month. But you are then going to look at a mass market model. And with that mass market model, you make a huge amount of money purely because of the volume of people that you have going through that program. Now, if you're charging $47 a month per person for your academy, which up at the moment of filming this, my particular academy is, you know, if you've got 100 people, that's $4,700 a month. You've got 200 people, that's coming up to nine, ten thousand $10,000 a month 
every month. So the numbers really start to add up very quickly. And I'm quite sure that even if you're just starting out, you've probably got more than 100 friends on your social media accounts alone. So these numbers are not absolutely out of reach, even for people that are just starting out. And that is why I do encourage you to really start having a think about now how you might structure your business so that you have everything in it for each part of this segment of the market. Are you going to have something for free? Yes, you are. I'd highly encourage you have a free lead magnet mini course. I would highly encourage that you have some kind of cheaper Kickstarter course and that you go on and have some big mama flagship authority program and then later start building out more content for done with you, done for you services and even some kind of high end boot camp or high end immersion program to really maximize your efforts put into this. So there we have the kind of overview for phase one of creating an online course which is planning and profit now in the next couple of videos we're going to go into over the next few days we're going to look at the next video will be all about content because all right you now know what topic you're going to teach you've got an idea what you're going to charge for it and how you're going to fit it in with the rest of your business but how on earth do you get it out of your head and structure it into any kind of logical order that will be the next video that comes up from me so do keep an eye out on that and for those of you who are interested in just getting your course created now, if you just want to get this done, my next group coaching program commences on the 1st of November. And by the 1st of December, you will have your online course planned, filmed, your whole online school ready, and you will have your online course out before Christmas, where Christmas to March is going to be the biggest course sales time of the year because so many people are reevaluating their lives at that time. Now, if you want to join the course creation group coaching program, Program with me. It will be open on the 25th of October. We start on the 1st of November and you can have a look at that, get more information by going to sarahcordner.com forward slash do it. All right, sarahcordner.com forward slash do it and you can uh, get your online course created before Christmas. Otherwise, thank you very much to everyone who's been sending in all of your questions in the survey. If you have more questions, please put them in the comments below or send me an email. And let me know what your questions are. And uh, tomorrow we'll be talking all about content in the next video. See ya.